Welcome to week two, the problem of the week. This one is the infinite resistor network. It is entitled, I cannot resist. No, you must infinitely. In order to solve the infinite resistor network problem, we have to really exploit the notion of infinity and some of the properties of infinity, very similar to what we did when we were converting infinitely repeating patterns of decimals into their lowest term fractional or rational number equivalents. And so let's take a look here at this infinite resistor network. It includes an infinite set of one ohm resistors that are connected both in series and in parallel. So the series ones are along the row extending in the top part of the diagram and the parallel ones are the vertical ones extending down downwards. And we want to find the total resistance R for the system. That would mean if I connected a battery between A and B, if I knew the total resistance or effective resistance of the system, I could determine what the current would flow uh, through uh, the circuit by simply using Ohm's law. Now, when I was a student, I think I first saw this problem when I was a freshman in college. I was just totally clueless. I had no idea what to do about this problem. I found it very frustrating to try to solve it. I don't believe I was able to actually get an answer for it. And then when the secrets were revealed about how to do it, it was one of those, you know, hit your hand on your head and say, oh, you know, well, if I'd looked at it that way, it's actually not that hard of a problem. And so let's carefully take it apart and show what we can do with this problem. So the one thing to do is we need to recognize that if we cut any finite part off of an infinite object, it still remains infinite. So we're going to start by exploiting that property of infinity by cutting this network after the first parallel resistor. And that results in a finite system with an infinite network. And that infinite network has the same resistance as the original network because it's still the same infinite network. And that's shown for you in this circled region. So we've separated into these two parts, this finite part on the left and the circled region on the right. That circled region has the exact same resistance as the original effective network. So we'll call that resistance simply R. And so now if you look at the lower diagram, you see that you have R for the resistance between terminals A and B, but we also have R at the end of the resistor. And that's really the key. We're going to get a self-consistent equation for R, which allows us to solve for what the problem is and what the answer is. And once again, it's really very, very similar to this conversion of a repeating pattern of digital representation of a number into its uh, rational fraction uh, representation. So now our original problem is mapped onto this simpler problem with one resistor in series and one in parallel and those are circled for you now in the diagram along with the infinite resistor R which is to the far right in the diagram. And so now we have to use the rules for resistance. When we have resistance in parallel we add the inverse of the resistances. When we have resistance in series, we add the resistances themselves. So the one ohm resistor at the top is in series with two parallel resistors, the one ohm resistor and the R resistor. So I first have to add the one ohm and the R resistor in parallel to get its effective resistance. And then I have to couple that in series with the one ohm resistor. And all of that will equal the total resistance, which once again is R. So we get R is equal to 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over R. That would be the formula for the parallel component and the formula for the series component, which get added together. Now we simplify that. We get 1 plus R over 1 plus R. And now we multiply both sides by 1 plus R and simplify, and we get this quadratic equation. R squared minus R minus 1 is equal to 0. We simply have to solve that equation. Solving that equation, of course, gives us two roots because it's a quadratic equation. 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 divided by 2. The resistance can't be negative. It has to be a positive number. So the negative root is not a physically relevant root. So I can throw that negative root out, and I'm left just with the positive root. And if I evaluate it, I get 1.61803 and so on. It's an irrational number. 
for the root, it turns out this number is actually the golden section or the golden ratio. And if you have never heard of the golden section or the golden ratio, I encourage you to go ahead and look that up in Wikipedia. You'll find some interesting discussion about that. Okay, that concludes our discussion of the infinite resistor network. I hope that this has been a clear way of showing you how to solve the problem. Keep in mind the hardest thing was recognizing how to exploit the infinity, not the algebra. The algebra itself is something that is relatively simple, and certainly the arithmetic, once you've applied the rules of a resistor network, are particularly simple for you to apply. The key is to recognize how you exploit the infinity that then allows you to solve this problem.